Good evening all. Sometimes you just have a bit of a mad idea, don't you? And uh, my mad idea tonight is to connect two DVMs together. So I've put a black wire to the two commons and a yellow wire, because it's the only one I could find the same length, to the two sort of positive inputs. And uh, I've been playing around with this and there are some quite strange effects. I'll show you what I mean. So let's turn them both on and put them on DC volts and I'm going to turn the lights on because it makes the display much easier to see and you can see that there's a sort of strange uh, small voltage offset that's pretty much the same on both but there's this floating DC voltage of minus 58 millivolts and climbing it would seem on both DVMs. So I'm not sure where that's coming from, possibly lighting or something. But if I put one of them to AC volts, the one that's on DC volts tracks very quickly back to zero. Now there's also a peculiar offset on the AC volts reading. It's quite small, but it's there. But because that has tracked back to very nearly zero, to my mind, that must mean there's kind of an impedance or a resistance on the input of this meter when it's in AC volts. So let's measure that. This is in AC volts. Let's measure the resistance of this meter when it's in AC volts. And it's 11.2 megohms. 11.2 megohms. So Whatever's inside this meter measuring AC volts has an input impedance or an input resistance of 11.2 megohms. Now let's see if there's consistency. I'll, so I'll switch them over and see whether this one on its ohms range sees 11.2 megohms. Slightly less, 11.15. But yeah, the uh, AC volts input on this meter now is showing up on this meter as 11.15 megohms. Isn't that interesting? Right, now I'm gonna put this one to DC volts and this goes a bit crazy. In fact, they both go completely bonkers. But there is a bit of method here, it doesn't look like it. But this one is kind of alternating between 300-ish millivolts and 400-ish millivolts. Basically, the left-hand meter is auto-ranging its ohm range because it's trying to work out the resistance of this meter. And in doing so, it's changing the voltage that it puts out. And this meter is seeing those changes and responding to it. So let's just try and lock the range of the left-hand meter. So I've locked it into ohms. And now it's settled down. The right-hand meter, which is on DC volts, is showing that the left-hand meter to measure ohms is putting out 0.438 volts. So is that consistent? Let's switch these over. Now, once again, I'm gonna to have to lock the range on this, otherwise they go completely crazy. So let's lock that to ohms. And yes, it's the same the other way around. Uh, this meter measuring DC volts is seeing that the right-hand meter to measure ohms is putting out uh, 0.433 volts, 433 millivolts. How strange. Okay, let's check the DC voltage of the continuity test. So that's the continuity test. It would beep if it measured a low resistance. Of course, it isn't measuring a low resistance because the resistance of this meter is high because it has a high input impedance for DC volts. But it's putting out 0.432 volts. So in order for this meter to measure continuity, it puts, well, it might be putting out a current, actually, it might be putting out a current and then measuring the voltage. But the voltage of whatever this is doing to measure continuity is 0.432 volts. Now, I wonder what the voltage is when this tries to measure capacitance. Well, it's 0.889 volts. So with this meter trying to measure capacitance, it's not successfully doing it because uh, it's reading zero nanofarads. 
but the voltage across the uh, the connections on here is 0.889 volts. How interesting. Let's try diode. Right, now that's also interesting because for this meter to measure the forward voltage of a diode, it puts out 2.34 volts. This meter seeing that on its voltage range. So it looks like this meter can measure um, diodes up to about 2.3 volts. In fact, I've checked this and um, this meter, uh, it says overload when it goes over two volts. So although it puts out 2.34 volts, it overloads when the uh, diode forward voltage is more than two. Now, what about measuring the resistance of the current measuring ranges. Well now that's interesting because the resistance of this meter when it's in micro amps is 51 ohms and in order to measure that 51 ohms the current flowing through this meter is 89 and a half micro amps. Now is that consistent when switched the other way? Ohms and micro amps Yep, it's completely consistent. The input impedance or the resistance of this meter when measuring microamps is 52 ohms. And in order to measure 52 ohms, then a current of 89.6 microamps flows. How fascinating. What about milliamps? Now, when you switch to milliamps, the resistance, the input resistance of a meter in of this meter in the milliamp range is much much lower and you'd expect that you'd expect that for measuring higher currents so we're measuring 2.7 ohms this meter when measuring milliamps measures 2.8 ohms and when we're measuring 2.8 ohms we're getting 8 actually 80 milliamps now that is the same as that setting there's the 89 Oh no, that's 89 microamps. What's this measuring? Oh yes, that's the same actually. 90 or 80, 80 something microamps, that's right. So that at least is consistent. Let's try that the other way around. Or do I need to try that the other way around? I'm getting very confused now. I'll tell you what, let's measure the amps range, the resistance of the amps range. Now this is saying uh, overload in mega ohms, so this is saying open circuit, and that's probably because, if I bring the camera out ever so slightly, um, let's take that back a bit, in the amps range I think we have to use the 10 amp connection where there's a, a thick piece of wire between there and common. So when measuring the resistance of the amps range it's infinity ohms but the resistance of milliamps and microamps is much lower. Now here's another one. When this meter is measuring capacitance and I flick through the ranges, it picks up some strange random <laughs> capacitances, which it then seems to just hold on to. I don't know whether it just gets a momentary capacitance, and it just seems to hold on to that until you drop out either side of these mid functions. If I flick that around, this just sort of picks up a random 0.85 nanofarads. Or 0.53 nanofarads. Just strange random capacitances which it just seems to hold on to. 0.01 nanofarads. That's very weird. So is there anything useful that uh, we can get from all this nonsense. Well, possibly this one. When this meter's in continuity mode, it's putting out 0.438 volts. When it's in capacitance mode, 0.9 volts. And in diode mode, 2.4 volts. Those seem a bit higher than they were before. Let's put that one on DC volts. Continuity is 0.433 volts. Capacitance is 0.888 volts and diode is 
2.34 volts. So in a sense, we've got three different voltage sources. Now I'm not sure what the impedance that needs to be, that needs to be in continuity. I'm not sure what the impedance of these voltage sources is, but when I put this in very high impedance DC input, continuity is 0.433, capacitance is 0.889, and diode is 2.34. So this is almost like a power supply with three different voltages. Not sure how I'd use it, but uh, interesting. Now this actually all came about because I was trying to measure the resistance of water. So here's a glass of water with um, my two probe leads and two bits of copper wire just stripped out of some twin and earth. And there's kind of an annoying three or possibly uh, four millivolts of DC voltage across these two bits of wire. So let's measure the resistance. And it starts off at 30k ohms, but it doesn't stay still. It's gone up to uh, 75 kilo ohms now. And the voltage, uh, sorry, the um, resistance just keeps growing. And I was thinking, well, how is the resistance changing? And of course, it's because in order to measure ohms, this meter is putting out that 0.4 volts on the two uh, connections. And that's, I don't know, charging up the water like a battery. These metals are the same. They're both copper. But let's go back to volts. And briefly, well, there we are. We've got sort of 60, 50, 40 millivolts of voltage. So this is actually behaving like a little rechargeable battery. I put this meter on ohms. The voltage across these two connections gradually rises, this connection becomes more positive. And so the measured resistance increases because the voltage across these two electrodes is increasing. And then we can see that that is, there was a hundred or so, it's dropped down to 60 and that will just continue now to drop. So you can't measure the resistance of water on the ohm range because it just sort of charges it up like a battery. And then of course, if you use dissimilar metals, so this is a piece of copper wire and this is a bolt. I'm not sure uh, what it's coated in, but it's obviously ferrous. It's made of steel, I think, because magnets stick to that really quite well. Um, it just becomes a battery anyway. There's actually 0.87 volts across there. I don't suppose it would make much difference. Now, of course, that's way out of the um, DVM's range for measuring because when we checked the voltage of a DVM trying to measure ohms it was 0.4. This is way over that so it thinks it's way over the uh, maximum reading for that. 0.8. So there's no way I can measure the resistance of water using dissimilar metals because well it's a battery. So there we are, all very strange. Cheerio.